2005 was the year in which Universal Studios really began to understand the internet fan community and the local fan community in Central Florida as a market that could be exploited so that they would be, uh, by using HalloweenHorrorNights.com in such a way to, to build their anticipation to a boil for the event and then during the event to get them to come back again and again and again. Before this, you know, the websites had had some clickable stuff, but they really weren't as spectacularly done. That year we started in a creepy little library in a nicely appointed room with a bookshelf. But coincidence, coincidence. Anyway, and uh, there was a comfy chair and a clock on the wall and a strange mirror to one side and uh, clearly a storm brewing outside, but... <coughs> Nothing was going on at first, but then slowly, bit by bit, they started adding stuff to the shelves. Little unusual artifacts. When you clicked on them, they took you places where you could find out more about the weird houses that would eventually become Halloween Horror Nights 15, Tales of Terror. Now, I had explained before how the Terror Queen was originally going to be the icon. The entire event was set in this mythical kingdom called Terra Cruentis, and they transformed the Islands of Adventure into Terra Cruentis. It was like a high fantasy story, like the Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, or you know the Chron you know Narnia from the Chronicles of Narnia. It was like this high fantasy kingdom, mythical kingdom, except it was an evil one filled with nothing but evil, and they turned the entire island into that. And the queen and ruler was the Terra Queen, and she was the central character, the icon of everything. But, as I mentioned, there was a wardrobe malfunction. Not the fun Janet Jackson type of wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, the, the inconvenient wardrobe malfunction. If the wardrobe isn't here, it isn't ready, what are we going to do malfunction? And so, they had to come up with something quick. And they came up with this old bat named the Storyteller Ilsa Strict because that was a costume they could put on right away and do and very quickly get her out and and put her in the marketing. And so that's how she started. And Ilsa Strict was done in a hurry. And because she was done in a hurry, there was no backstory. She's the one icon, if indeed she is an icon. There's some controversy because the Terra Queen was intended to be the icon, and unlike. Eddie, she was not removed from the event, she was still there, central to the entire event of Terra Cuentis all around the park, uh, e everything centered on her in, while, while you were there at the park, and the storyteller was just there in one house in a very tiny scene, like she was just having a cameo. So, a lot of people felt the storyteller was a marketing mascot, and the Terra Queen was actually the event icon. Well, it's a matter of semantics, but... By the year 2006, however, the following year, they had Sweet 16, and they brought back Jack and the caretaker and the director, but not the Terror Queen. They brought back the storyteller and put her on parody with those other four characters, and these are the four icons from the past few years, now here for the reunion year 2006. So because of that, uh, there's good argument that she was an icon, even though she's a Johnny-come-lately icon. Either way, I really don't think this sort of eye controversy matters because the whole point is to have fun and to get scared from scary stories. And you can call it an icon, or you can call it, Ooh, scary motherfucker gonna scare me! Ah! Whatever you want to call it, it's fine. You know? You can call it Fred, so long as it's scary and effective and sells the show. That's what's important. Having a good time, having fun. That's what the Halloween Horror Nights is about. Not about getting the fights over what to call something. But nevertheless, because of the controversy, there are those who think Terra Queen was the icon, Storyteller not. And those who say Storyteller icon, Terra Queen not. I'd say, they can be icons together. There's no problem with that. I don't mind. Call them both icons, whatever you want. But anyway, she's the only one of the icons, whatever you want to call them, that has no backstory at all. All the others had some kind of really intricate backstory. We didn't even know what her name was in 2005. It wasn't released. All we know is that she was the storyteller, and she told stories of terror, and the tale she was telling was a tale of Terra Cruentis. 
in 2006. For the first time, we got a little bit of information, but no backstory. All we knew was that her name was Elsa Strict. She was involved with the Dungeon of Terror uh, house in 2006, the house that uh, was in the Jaws queue originally back in Fright Nights in 1991. Now made as sort of a roadside attraction. It was kind of like that originally as well. It was like a roadside attraction that was uh, a roadside attraction of doom. Where you're gonna get killed when you after you pay your fifty cents and go in and see the exhibits, you might end up an exhibit yourself. Sort of like uh, Doctor Satan's ride in the House of a Thousand Corpses. Now that I think about it, which was a house too. Did you know that was a house before it became a movie? Yeah, Rob Zombie designed that as a haunted house for horror nights in Hollywood, and then they liked it so much they greenlighted the movie. But then Universal decided they didn't want to make that movie. And so MGM picked it up, and they didn't want to make the movie. And so somebody else picked it up after that. It's a real wild story, but this is not the place to tell it. I just, it just trivia, HHN trivia that I thought I want to bring up. Uh, but what was the backstory of this woman? We still don't know. All we know is her name is Ilsa Strict, and that she's uh, picky about following certain rules. Hmm. Hmm. The first time we saw her was in the mirror in that library. A flash of lightning and there her face appeared. Ooh. 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 She first appeared as a reflection in a mirror? I never even thought of that before. Oh my god. Is there a connection between the storyteller and Bloody Mary as some have guessed before? They are similar because one is the world of urban legends and the other is the world of stories and tales. They sort of reflect each other. Ooh, that's interesting. Maybe there may be a connection at Halloween Horror Nights 20 this year. We'll have to wait and see for that. But Ilsa, who was she? I have one little idea. I don't know for true, but there was a story, a children's story, told on the website for Halloween Horror Nights 2006, Sweet 16. And it goes something like this. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Elizabeth. She was gold of hair and blue of eyes. <clears throat> One day, a winged creature with red eyes and sharp teeth decided to skin her alive. <laughs> and then she ate him. <laughs> she ate him? Yeah, she ate him. <laughs> and so was possessed by his evil soul. <laughs> she went home to her castle and killed her dolly. <laughs> she ripped the stuffing out. <laughs> and when her mommy saw what she had done, she gave her mommy a big hug. Oh, and when her mommy wasn't lucky, bang, 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 went the hammer. And then she lived happily ever after. <laughs> evil little story. And when I first read it, and not to not to go into my private life or anything, but um, I am a professor, and my students are therapists, and so I've encountered stories like this before that were written by children who had been victims of abuse, and this reads like a childhood a victim of abuse. Now I mentioned this uh, on the vault once, and I may have offended some people with that. I'm sorry, but it seems to me that this could be a metaphor for something that happened to Elsa. Elizabeth Strict, Elsa could be a nickname for Elizabeth easily, when she was a little girl. And as a result, she became, as an adult, the storyteller. Now, just a postulation. Now, let's see, I have a minute left. It's not enough time to do the Terror Queen justice, but let's talk about her a little bit. The Terror Queen was the center of the entire event. You entered into Terror Gate, and you went up to the Terror Throne where the Queen was. And there, sacrifices were committed every so often, and their blood would be made into bloodberry wine, which would be drunk in uh, the Ironborn Gorge at the Demon Candina, and then the blood would be taken to uh, the Gorewood Forest, where the children are learning how to be evil at the school, and there the body collectors would process the body, the flesh, and the blood, and then it would, it would go on to the Dragon Forge, where in the, in the blood ruins and in the, uh, uh, the terror mines, the forging of the sword, the, uh, the knife, and then through the North Hollow you come back to the throne and the knife would be used for the sacrifice. And this happened every night again and again until the last night on Halloween the Terra Queen herself became the sacrifice. 
There, I did it in less than 10 minutes. Wonderful.